Do you want to learn how to drop an anchor on a super yacht? Then make yourself comfortable as I cover everything in this complete guide. Work on a super yacht, move up through the ranks and maximize your potential. Hello and welcome to Work on a Super Yacht. If this is your first time here and you're interested in making the most of your time in the super yachting industry, I suggest you start by clicking that subscribe button and the bell icon to stay notified of when new videos are posted. Now, when it comes to anchoring, it's likely that the process is going to start here for you, up on the bridge with the toolbox talk from the captain. In order for the operation to be effective, you're going to need some critical information which will likely include, but may not be limited to, which anchor to drop, port or starboard, the nature of the seabed and whether or not you're going to need to help look out for example a sandy patch where it's prohibited to drop amongst seagrass, the depth of water and the amount of chain that you're to pay out, typically five times the depth of water. But I hear you ask, how do you know how much chain you've paid out? Well, fortunately, it's marked, probably by you, during the last shipyard period. When it comes to anchor chain, it's marked in terms of shackles or shots. Now, I don't mean this sort of shackle, but rather shackle as a unit of length. Let's start by converting the shackle into a more understandable unit of length, approximately 27.5 meters. So, every 27.5 meters along the chain, you will find it marked, and you will also find a joining shackle or kenter shackle. The joining shackle is really handy because it can be dismantled and chain can be added or taken away before reassembly. The markings are normally painted, and in my experience, there are two different methods. The first method can be found on merchant ships and normally much larger yachts. In this method, the first Kenta shackle will be painted red, and then to show that it is the first, one link either side of the Kenta shackle will be painted white. At the second Kenta shackle, or 55 meters along the chain, the Kenta shackle will be painted red again, and then to show that it is the second shackle, two links either side will be painted white. From there, it continues in the same pattern. At the third shackle, three white links either side. At the fourth shackle, four white links either side. The second method, which is more commonly found on yachts, uses a few more colours. So at the first shackle, the Kenta shackle plus an equal number of links either side of it will be painted red. At the second shackle, it will be painted yellow. At the third shackle, it will be painted blue. At the fourth shackle, it will be painted white, and at the fifth shackle, it will be painted green. Where there are more than five shackles, the pattern will repeat, so at six shackles, it will go back to red. R, Y, B, W, G, often remembered by the rhyme, rub your balls with grease. Now, of course, girls, you don't have any balls at least not literally speaking, but that's not to say that you don't have balls. But you do have boobs. So for you, rub your boobs with grease. So you're in 10 meters of water, five times the depth. You can expect a length or scope of chain of about 50 meters. That's about two shackles, 55 meters depending then on the way in which your chain is marked, you'll either be looking for yellow or one red plus two white links either side. One last thing you might be told is whether or not this needs to be from where you're standing on the deck or from the waterline. Now on a yacht of this size, that's a distance of maybe only three or four meters, so maybe not so important, but on a much larger yacht, that length will be greatly increased so it's important to note whether or not you're measuring from on deck or from the waterline. Right, I'm glad we've got all that out of the way. Should we go and do some anchoring? Enjoying this video? Then I'd be really grateful if you could please just hit that like button for me. Okay, so here I am where you're used to seeing me up on the foredeck 
and you'll notice that there are lines on the bits. We are in port, but don't worry, I recently filmed us dropping starboard anchor for real, so you'll get to see that in full. As ever, it's safety first, so at the very minimum, before you come up here, you'll want to make sure that you're wearing shoes and you've got some form of eye protection for dropping the anchor, even if that's only a pair of sunglasses. Just one final note on safety. If the chain gets jammed up, please, please, please resist the temptation to start trying to kick it or lever it with your hands. If you're not sure, stop what you're doing and call for assistance. In the same way, if the chain is running out of control, don't try to grab it with your hands to stop it. Trust me, you've got no chance. What I didn't mention when we were talking about markings up on the bridge earlier is that the last one or two shackles are marked in a highly visible and most importantly different way to the rest of the markings on the chain. This is so that you know when the chain is coming to the end. On this yacht it is a pattern of alternating red, yellow and green, but whatever the case make sure you know what the pattern is on your yacht, because if you're standing up here and the chain's running out of control and you see that pattern, it's time to get off the foredeck. Let's just have a look down in the forepeak for a moment. Here we can see where the end of the anchor chain, called the bitter end, is connected to the yacht. As you can see, it's just a simple piece of three-strand rope. The reason for this is that in the event of an emergency, it can be cut loose. It is not, however, designed to be able to withstand the force of all of this anchor chain running out uncontrollably. If you're standing anywhere on the foredeck when the last bit of anchor chain runs up the spurling pipe, whips round the back of the gypsy wheel and heads out down the hawser pipe, there's a good chance that it's going to be game over. Please, don't take a chance on this one. Rather, lose the anchor and the chain than your life. Okay, so let's start with a bit of terminology. Brake. Capstan. Gypsy wheel. Chain. Spurling pipe. Devil's claws. Hawes pipe. Just a quick note on this one. It is actually another form of securing the anchor, the idea being you pull out this pin and then the flap comes down and the top of the chain link runs through this gap. Now personally, I don't like this system. For me, there's too much chance of it getting jammed up. What you'll hopefully find on other yachts is a far more reliable guillotine system where the chain runs through the centre of the V. You have a threaded bar that runs across the top of the arms with a wheel. And when you turn that thread, the arms close and clamp firmly over the anchor chain. The first thing to do then is to remove all of these securing devices and then to walk the anchor out. The anchor is currently in the anchor pocket all the way home, as we call it. And you don't want to drop it from this height. By walking the anchor down to the waterline, we remove the risk of damaging the equipment and we also test that the equipment is working properly. Now the first piece of securing equipment that I want to remove are the devil's claws, but before we do that, let's just make sure that the brake is securely fastened and that the anchor is in gear. Anchor secure, teeth engaged, with the gypsy wheel. I can now be confident that when I release the devil's claws, the anchor chain is not going to run out. To keep the deck clear, I've just put the devil's claw away in the locker so nobody trips over it. And now, we need to make sure that we can see the anchor, that we can see what we're doing. And on this particular boat, unlike most I've worked on, 
it's actually not possible to see the anchor by looking over the side. So, two things to help us. One, I can remove this stainless steel bar. On other yachts, you might get some form of removable hatch or even a fold-out platform. And two, we also have cameras housed in the anchor pockets. They can only be seen from the bridge. But that's going to really help the captain out so they know what's going on with the anchor chain. Now we can have a look over the side to check that it's all clear before walking out. This is important. Don't just go walking out or dropping the anchor without first checking over the side. You never know what could be down there. OK then, I'm happy with that. We know that the gypsy wheel is engaged with the capstan, so I can now safely remove this brake and it will be held securely, ready for me to walk out on the control. It's now just going to be a case of pressing down on my control and the anchor's going to walk out. Now you'll see that I'm going to lower this just into the water, which reduces any chance of it swinging around, possibly into the hull. The brake must now be reapplied so that we can disengage the gypsy wheel from the capstan, making it ready to drop freely. Disengage the teeth. All the way up and a quarter turn back. We can see that it's holding on the brake and we can test the capstan is spinning freely. We now know that when we release that brake the anchor will drop. Just a few more things before we go and drop this anchor. Number one, it can be a good idea to wet the teak around the anchor station. It just saves any paint shavings, mud, flicking off onto your nice clean teak and making a mess of it. Number two, this is a two-person job. One person on the brake, one person watching the anchor chain and communicating with the bridge. And Three, despite what I said earlier, this particular yacht doesn't have any Kenta shackles. It is just seven shackles of straight chain, and you'll find no paint on it because, due to logistical reasons, we had to use cable ties, and surprisingly, they have worked really, really well, and we haven't lost a single one. With all that said, I'm going to hand over to Julian now, who's going to drop the starboard anchor. Meantime, I'm going to stand a little further forward where I've got a perfect line of sight with the captain and I can signal how many shackles are out. One shackle, two shackles. Notice how at first the anchor and chain drop really rapidly because the anchor is just free falling through the water. Then, when it hits the bottom, in this case, at about half a shackle, the rate of chain paying out will slow. At this point, it's necessary to moderate how much chain is being paid out, because otherwise you just end up with a huge pile of chain on the bottom. One shackle. Most importantly, the chain must not be allowed to start running out of control. If it does, the brake can overheat and it will then be impossible to regain control. Once the required amount of chain has been paid out, the brake can be applied and the bridge informed. Two 
the captain will then allow the yacht to move back or possibly even apply a little bit of a stern to really dig it in. At this point, it's necessary to watch the anchor chain to see that it is holding. While one person watches what the anchor chain is doing, it's the perfect time for the other person to put up the anchor ball. Check your call regs. Merchant shipping notice 1781. That's right, I'm going to keep saying it until you download it from the link in the description below and learn it. And you will find that when anchored, it is necessary to display one black ball of 600 millimeters in diameter. By night, for a vessel under 50 meters, one all round white light, and for a vessel over 50 meters, two all round white lights. Back to the anchor chain, and what we're looking for here is to see that when tension comes onto the chain, it holds firm for an extended period. If tension keeps being lost and then coming up tight again, it could be a sign that the anchor is dragging. Meantime, the captain up on the bridge will be checking the track on the electronic chart and also transits on fixed objects around the yacht to see whether or not the vessel is moving astern. If the anchor has dug in and tension is being maintained on the chain, the yacht will then spring forward and you should eventually end up with the chain running down in a nice big loop to the seafloor. At this point, the yacht can be said to have come up on the chain. If the captain is happy, the engines can now be switched off. It's now necessary to make the anchor secure once more. Wind the teeth all the way down. Quarter turn back. We now know that if the brake were to fail, the teeth are engaged and the capstan would catch the gypsy wheel and stop the chain from slipping. The main thing is that the anchor is left in a state of readiness. So if we wish to pay out yet more chain, it's simply a case of disengaging the teeth and releasing the brake. And if we wish to haul quickly, we can simply disengage the brake, teeth are already engaged, use the control to haul the anchor. And that's it, the process complete. Thank you so much for watching. Of course, your yacht may have slightly different standard operating procedures or slightly different equipment, but I hope that this has given you a good base of knowledge on which to build. As always, any questions, please leave them down in the comment section below. A like would be fantastic, a sub would be amazing, and I look forward to seeing you next time.